And this is Pain User. And we are back for more awesome winners bracket round one matches out of the IPL season two. Yes, these are real IPL season two matches. <laughs> Indeed. We have, we have done a ton of qualifier matches. Nice to be casting the main event itself. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. I'm so stoked for these IPL two games. All the games so far have been great. And uh, now we have a game between Six Jacks DDE and Fnatic Phoenix. Uh, Phoenix spawning as our blue Terran in the bottom position and uh, DDE spawning as our red Terran in the top position. We're going to have a TVT for you guys on Zelnaga Caverns and I can't help but think that Phoenix uh, is going to do pretty well here. Phoenix has amazing TVT. He's a very, very talented player. Uh, I love watching him play and his TVT never ceases to amaze me. And he doesn't use those super conventional standard builds. No, exactly. Uh, you know, a lot of this map in, in traditional TVT comes down to a lot of positioning and things like that around the Zelnaga Towers. But Phoenix is liable to do something just like multi prong drops everywhere and just be ridiculously aggressive and throw you off, uh, throw you for a loop. Now, DDE is a player that I, I admit I'm a little bit of a DDE fanboy. I've seen a lot of potential in him for a long time. Um, and I think that he's going to make quite a splash. He already has. He's qualified for IPL. But I think he's got a lot of bright future, a pretty bright future in pro gaming ahead of him. So I'm really curious to see what he ends up doing here. Um, he gotta, he's got to know that Phoenix plays that really, really aggressive style. I'm curious to see how he counters that. DDE, kind of another player that he can play the conventional tank warfare style, but he can just switch it up at the drop of a hat really, really well. Yeah. Uh, you know, Phoenix can also play both styles. So this is going to be a really interesting matchup. Phoenix definitely loves his drop play. Uh, he'll blue flame hellion drop, he'll marine drop, uh, and he's so good at sneaking those dropships in there and just doing a ton of damage. So look to see some of that from him. And yeah, on Zelnaga Caverns, uh, such a positional based war in TVT. Siege tanks, obviously so effective on this map. It's almost impossible to use any kind of a pure bio build. And actually yeah. lately we've been seeing uh, a lot of heavy mech builds, especially out of the European players. Yeah, absolutely. And so I'm really curious to see what both these players do. It looks like we have a tech lab coming right up for DDE. So DDE is uh, going to do some sort of a quick expand build. We'll see what he's able to do with this Reaper. Now, it can be quite effective, especially if he chooses to run around the top or possibly the bottom of this cliff line. Can get through relatively undefended. Looks like Phoenix, though, going ahead and just throwing up a reactor. So a little bit of contrasting styles already. I would be very surprised if he actually was able to do some damage with the Reaper. Uh, Zelnaga Cavern's not the best map to open Reaper, I don't think. One thing it's good for is holding on to the Zelnaga Towers, uh, which is so important in TVT. He'll be able to ward off that SCV or perhaps a single Marine uh, that might be at the Zelnaga Tower, and that's definitely really important for him. Yep, absolutely, and it looks like we do have a sec or a factory coming right up for Phoenix, so he's going to open with a little bit of uh, Hellions here for the time being. Command Center is also coming up. Both players opting for that fast, uh, fast command, and right away, DDE drops that barracks away, decides to put a reactor right down, and goes into a factory. So maybe Blue Flame Hellions coming out of him, um, although he certainly could be moving into a tank style, but does he have his second guess? Yeah, I guess he does. So we do have two gas coming up right now from DD, and it looks like he's going to go in there with that Reaper and a Marine. The Marine shielding a bit of the damage from the Marines. He's going to be able to pick off, uh, well, one Marine, and now he's going to get into the main and scout out everything. He sees the reactor. He sees the factory. He also sees the command center. He's going to be able to pick off one SCV, and I don't think he's going to be able to make it out. And oh. wow, the rocket man exploding right there. <laughs> Jetpack going off with all its jet fuel inside, but looks like DDE is going to move into that marine tank build. No upgrades for any of these bio units yet, just uh, going straight to reactor marines and complementing that with his siege tank force. Starport coming up after that. Looks like orbital commands coming down for both players at about the same time. So expansion's pretty similar. Both players have the same structures up. And now we have a tech lab factory coming up for Phoenix. So both players will be arriving towards the same unit composition pretty soon. Yeah, and one of the only deviations thus far is Phoenix building into that Hellion, which will allow him to scout quite a bit on the map. It'll give him control over those Zelnaga Caverns, assuming he doesn't lose it, uh, and he's not going to lose it here. But if he does decide to push up the ramp, uh, he will run into that tank, and it will cause him some problems. 
Phoenix looks like he's just trying to get a timing here on the expansion. And we do have a Banshee coming out of Phoenix here. And he might lose this Hellion. It looks like he is going to lose that Hellion. Not the biggest deal in the world, but I feel like he wanted to, to keep that alive and patrol the Zelnaga Towers and just use that Hellion as a forward scout. Yeah, both players dropping down their orbital commands at their natural at about the same time. That Banshee you were talking about before, about 60% of the way done. And he does have enough gas to go right into siege tank production if he so desires. And indeed, it is coming up. So uh, Banshee number one started. We'll see how many Banshees he throws into this composition. Or if we're going to see a little bit of a switch here in just a second to more conventional air units. Now, DDE does have a pretty good force that's out. And if he's able to catch the Banshee or, or he mitigates the damage done from the Banshee, he actually actually does have the larger uh, stand and fight style force and it looks like he is going to do some damage to the Banshee uh, but the Banshee manages to steal one kill DDE has to turn around this Banshee is going to be annoying all the way back yeah the thing about that Banshee is, is it's a sound oh and he might lose the Banshee here no uh, medevac coming in just in the nick of time going to be able to start healing up those Marines and actually makes the Marines strong enough to take out that Banshee heads up and it looks like he's going to move in here but there are more than enough Marines and a medevac of his own for Phoenix. Phoenix going to be able to ward him off almost instantly. Uh, you know, DDE does not want to have anything to do with that. He's not even close to that size worth of army, but you know, the tables are going to turn if Phoenix continues to push all the way back to DDE's natural and runs into DDE's reinforcements. Absolutely. So. DDE's ready with siege mode now, and that could certainly turn things in his favor. Phoenix makes his way up, and the Marines are starting to be shelled. One Marine has already gone down. A couple more units are going to fall, as he will pull back into the range of the siege tank. Once again, all of these tanks are sieged up. Phoenix loses his tank and a bunch of Marines running into the brick wall defense there out of DDE. Oh my goodness. That tank just instantly going down right there, along with a hand full of marines the rest of the marines hightail it out of there they don't want to have anything to do with that tank line or maybe they're not going to hightail it out of there entirely it looks like they're hanging out over in chaseless's secret hallway probably drinking some beers you know just just hanging out but uh there is a medevac there now and he might decide to send those back in and do some damage here but dde with a brilliant scout maneuver sends an scv to the left side and just like i thought he is going to bring that medevac over to the natural and try and do some drop damage there is however a turret oh wow great reaction time by phoenix right there pulling away from that turret but there is a push coming to his front door right now and i don't know how much phoenix has to deal with this he does have two tanks in siege mode and they're going to be able to shell away at these marines but is it going to be enough? Forced to pull some SCVs off the line, but uh, those siege tanks just really putting a world of hurt on DDE's army right now. DDE going to be forced to pull out, but DDE did manage to keep both of his tanks alive. He managed to keep his medevac alive, so all of the high gas units right there stay alive for DDE. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a really good way to retreat for DDE there, but it was a kind of an interesting choice of engagements. Um, he did have the pure units to just move up and pick off the siege tanks if he wanted, but he kept all those units back for a little while and gave time for those SCVs to get in position, buffer damage, and repair the siege tanks at the same time. So a little surprised about that, but DDE, like you said, manages to keep all of his units. Now going ahead and taking down his destructible rocks. We are going to have another expansion out of him eventually. Let's take a look at what both players are producing off of. Looks like we're going to have five racks, single factory and reactor starport for DDE. Back on Phoenix's side of things, double factory, Ooh. quad uh, barracks and single starport. And well. the reactor on the starport. I can't help but think that Phoenix uh, is really just going to pull away in the tank count with the double factory and that's going to be so important, especially on a map like Zelnaga Caverns where where, you know tank positioning is just absolutely everything it oh and it looks like he might be able to pick off this medevac no he switches it up starts going after the vikings the two vikings to one gonna be able to inflict a ton of damage and pick off both of phoenix's vikings now phoenix has no air control he cannot see those tanks on the low ground and his production facilities are being sieged this is an absolutely terrible position for Phoenix right now. He is up against yep. the wall with a knife at his throat and he needs to make something happen and break this contain and, and it, it looks, looks like, like he's he going to. Oh, he's making his way out right now and Phoenix is losing a lot of health on his tanks but I think he has enough to break through this. The splash damage of DDE is doing a little bit of damage but Phoenix does break, equalizes the supply and uh, like you mentioned before, you know, DDE is going to have the greater bio numbers but Phoenix is going to be able to double produce 
those tanks. He'll get another tech lab going here in a second. And that is going to provide quite the advantage for him. Uh, we do have command centers going up for both players. There's DDEs. There's Phoenixes. Don't believe these rocks have been taken down yet for Phoenix, but no matter, those will go down pretty quickly. Take a look at the work count as well. Both players almost even 58 to 60, so that supply difference is mostly an army, but both players looking pretty even at the moment. Well, there really isn't that much of a supply difference to begin with. We're talking 105 to 101 right now. This game is dead even. It's yep. nobody's game right now. Uh, and it looks like DDE actually trying to go back to that position. He might get caught a little bit. Uh, you know, off guard here. Phoenix now pushing up to the Zelnaga Tower. He might be able to cut off this small group that's coming around the top, and it looks like he is going to do that with a stim, oh. and he is going to kill so many units right here. This is just not good for DDE right now. This is not what he wanted to happen. He's also going to lose that additional tank, and just very well played by Phoenix right there. I kind of saw it happening in slow motion, but I wasn't sure if he was going to actually go through with it and execute it, and he managed to execute it perfectly picking off all of DDE's tanks and now you know DDE with the single factory and losing all those tanks the issue is just going to be compounded Phoenix going to continue to produce double tanks and his tank numbers are just going to skyrocket yeah the question is does he go to some sort of a Marine King Prime style just heavy drop play something along those lines to try and counter those tank numbers make up for the uh, lack of mobility of Phoenix or what does he do at this point DDE only just now finishing up combat shields uh, he actually didn't have combat shields during that last fight the upgrades here were heavily in Phoenix's favor Phoenix does manage to stim up we'll see how much damage he can do here DDE trying to run away and this is going to cost him marines and possibly a tank or two one tank is not quite gonna go down looks like dd does manage to save it but um yeah so dde still doing damage down here at the bottom right he's got a lot of units ready to go if he could pull off a flanking maneuver it would be pretty darn good for him although he would have to run through all of these siege tanks and that would be a pretty hard task to undertake yeah i love that supply depot position in the bottom right from phoenix that was just so key right there able to prevent that backstab from happening and it's just the little things like that we also have supply depots on the left hand side of the map for dde going to be able to spot random drop ships uh you know flanking forces things of that nature and it looks like he might be able to catch phoenix's drop ship here stimming all of his marines but not microing them under the drop ship to take a concise volley he does have vikings in position to pick off that medevac though and he is going to get the medevac on the right hand side of the map losing all of those marines and a medevac now it is up to dde to hold his gold expansion and he's moving tanks into range of phoenix's tanks Looks like he is going to be able to pick off one, two, possibly three of those here, and he will get the third, assuming those Marines don't come in and shield some of the hits, although he did lose sight range, and Phoenix with air superiority for the time being, it looks like he's actually about to lose that, uh, is able to pick off a few tanks, but I think DDE will hold. Yeah, this is a very back-and-forth game at the moment right now. Uh, DDE picked off that drop, which helped to equalize all the lost supply that he had missed before. Looks like Phoenix queuing up another drop, perhaps. Uh, but, of course, this Supply Depot will catch a lot of that in transit. Phoenix making his way up now with a few Marines as well. Looks like he wants oh to move in. Oh, my tanks goodness. Are seized up for DDE now. This tank is going to fall from Phoenix. Uh, damage being done to these two tanks. Nope not quite in range and it looks like DDE is going to pull back for the moment the supply depot did go down at the top left hand corner Phoenix with a supply advantage at the moment but he is up by 13 workers which means DDE has a slight army advantage uh, let's take a look at upgrades one two upgrades now for DDE back at Phoenix's side of thing just zero one so a pretty significant lead for DDE although one two is finishing up at the moment so Phoenix will be caught up in that regard another base coming down for DDE as well command center on the way just a lot to take stock of in this game as so much is happening at any one given point in time and it looks like DDE intercepts this medevac here at the top left hand corner and picks it off I absolutely love the sensor towers coming up for both players. It's so important to have sensor towers, especially in mid on this map. You just get such a wide berth of, of movement detection. You can tell which side he's working up on, and it looks like DDE is going to try for a break here, not sieging any of his tanks. A lot of the Marines going down, but I think he might have enough Marines to actually force Phoenix back. Phoenix losing a pretty good chunk of his army right there, but he actually might have traded more efficiently. Keep in mind, DDE has all of his units to Together. 
uh, Phoenix has multiple squads of units that he's using to defend different territories on the map. So overall, I believe he has the larger army and he definitely had the better of the position in that positioning battle right there and forcing a split between the armies. He's going to send his Marines up into the natural and wow, he's going to be able to camp the production line for quite a bit here. Going to kill all these SCVs that were forced to pull off the line and a majority of 